Welcome. Hello, folks. Well, you know, thanks to Bjorn Nelson, I've received these two old engines. You see, in my Skipper Snowboats video comments section, I received a message from Cindy slash Bjorn about these engines, and the next thing I knew, here they were. So thank you, Bjorn and Cindy. So since we're really buried in snow, I figured it'd be a good idea to clean them up and see how they run. First is the Thimbledrome Space Bug Jr. Well, the Thimbledrome Space Bug Jr. actually began its life in 1953. The earlier year's standard Space Bug actually had a large aluminum tank, where the Jr. came with a smaller plastic tank. Its color matched the color of the firewall of the model it was on. Well, like the earlier Space Bugs, the Juniors also had the earlier glow head with a small thread diameter, with three fins which changed to the large threads and the standard for the next 50 years on the Cox engines. This engine that I have here also has the original three-piece piston with aluminum conrod, so I know it was circa 1953. This reed valve system is also different now and more like the modern bees. You see on this older style reed valve system, it consists of two reeds in tandem. One is 0.05 millimeter thick and the other is 0.08 millimeter thick. Well then, beginning in 1955, the Space Bug Jr. engine incorporated the one reed valve assembly, which has also become the standard for the next 50 years. And also to reduce the manufacturing costs, Space Bug Jr. had only one bypass port. In the newer 1955 version, the Space Bug Jr. had the new single-piece piston and cylinder design for which also was used for the next 50 years on all Cox engines. Shot of Okay, now let's talk about the TD-049 and go ahead and run it too. This 1961 TD was manufactured between November 1960 through January 1996. This one's a pretty early one looking at the serial number. Well, the TD is Cox's most famous engine and dominant for many years in competition, and it was designed by Bill Atwood. He had a tapered and lightened piston resulting in a tighter piston fit at TDC, uh, that's top dead center, and had a lot less piston mass. The cylinder has two deep bypass ports with bypass booster grooves, also known as side flutes, on each bypass port which resulted in a way better air fuel mixture. The TD also has a true peripheral venturi for better fuel intake and draw or suction. It also has a precision, balanced, and milled crankshaft for better fuel intake and balance too. In 1962 it was independently tested to develop 0.105 brake horsepower, that's about 79 watts, at 22,000 rpm. In 1961 the TD051 began being manufactured. It was simply a class A version of the engine for contests. And because of the slightly bigger bore from 049 to 051, it had to be detuned with a small groove in the piston skirt to bleed off just enough power to be legally producing the same amount of power as an 049 per the rules of free flight sanction contests. 
Il-51 also has a red car body to make an instantly visible distinction. Well, a tank leaks. So, probably not gonna run very long. Just a little shot here. Well, here's some trivia that you might not know. There were several heads available over the years, but when I was a kid, it was really great to get that high compression head. It only had two main fins versus the three found on most of the engines, and you would find them mostly on TDs. So there you go, folks. Just a little bit of history about these two engines. You know, I used to hand out piston power keychains at contests when I had all those engines that Dave Duncan gave to me. He was an engineer at Cox, a member of our club. I had the pistons gold-plated and used a small lathe to make grooves that made it look like piston rings. Well, TDs were also made in 020 sizes and even tiny 010 sizes. I miss mine because it was burned up in the fire, but that was a great little tiny engine. This is actually a gold-plated 020 piston and the two types of 020s the Cox used to make. You know, for parts and engines, including vintage, you might want to check out coxengines.com. And special thanks to Bjorn Nelson for sending me these engines. And thanks to all you viewers for watching. So please stay tuned because there's going to be more on this subject coming up pretty quick. Goodbye.